What's going on, everybody? Cheers. Happy Wednesday or whatever day of the week it is when you're watching or listening to this. Welcome to the With Her Two Hands podcast. I am your host, Bogey, and this is the weekly show where we celebrate the women who build, fix, and make the things that make the world go round with her own two hands. We do live stream, live candid conversations with women in the trades every Wednesday, and we release new archive episodes every Monday, all at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and you can listen anywhere you get your podcasts. Tonight, I am really excited to be joined by a metal fabricator and custom car builder. Now, we are seeing women, num the number of women increase in lots of trades. However, all across the trades, across the United States and most of the rest of the world, uh, the percentage of women within trades is below 10% in most trades, less than 2% in some trades. Metal fabrication is definitely one where we do not see a ton of ladies represented uh, doing that kind of work and doing the custom fabrication. So it's really cool to meet more women who have taken up this line of work and have fallen in love with it and made it their own. And tonight's guest, is definitely one of those ladies. She has over 12, year, 12 years of experience doing this work, and I'm really excited to meet her and hear her journey. But before we dive in, a uh, big thank you to each and every one of you for making this show part of your weekly routine. Uh, together, this is all about normalizing women in the trades. So thank you guys for being a part of that journey. Uh, every week by featuring these women, we are celebrating them, we are sharing their stories and hopefully making it feel a little bit nor more normal. So when you're out in the world or when you're working at your job and you encounter a woman doing this kind of work, it doesn't shock and surprise you, but that it feels totally normal and that these women get celebrated in the way that they deserve, that they haven't often been. So thank you guys for being a part of that. All of your comments, your likes and your shares uh, help uh, spread the word and get what these women's stories in front of more people and helps make us uh, able to continue doing this series. So we appreciate all of that. So if you like this series, do comment, do like, do share. Um, and if you have amazing women in the trades that you know, please let us know about them. We would love to get them on an episode as well. And other than that, I do also need to thank our sponsor for this week's episode, Drive Time. If you're not familiar with them, you should definitely go check them out. They've been a sponsor from way back in the day in the beginning of this podcast series. Uh, and they do a ton of work uh, both behind the scenes and throughout their daily life uh, to really promote and advance women in the trades. They are committed to seeing more diversity within the trades, and they do a lot of training within their organization to help people get their start in their career, to find their home, to figure out their niche within the automotive industry. Um, they have a ton of different opportunities and a ton of great education that they do, really incredible culture. Um, so whether you're looking to buy a new to you car or whether you're looking for a new place to be your job and your home away from home, uh, definitely go give them a, a look. I will have the link to them in the description down below. So definitely go check them out. But now, Enough of me blabbing. Without further ado, let's bring on tonight's guest, Miss Cynthia Godinez. Hello, how are you? I'm good, and you? I am really good. I am super excited to have you on an episode. I know, thank you, this is such an honor. Absolutely, no, the honor is mine. I, um, backstory for anybody watching and listening to this, Cynthia and I met very briefly um, at this past SEMA. And um, it, was it your boss that grabbed me and was like, hey, you need to meet my one of my employees? <laughs> yeah, he did. He met you whenever you guys were setting up. So that's how we got introduced because yeah. of him. And uh, it was such an honor just meeting you and every every other female there. So, yeah, you exciting. went from like not knowing any other women in the trades to meeting all of these women at the at SEMA and at the uh at the She Shed event that we had, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. kind of rare meeting other women in the industry. So that was extremely exciting for me yeah. just to get to know more people and especially females. Heck yeah. 
I, I loved it. We were so excited to meet you. Like I said, we don't, I've met a lot of women, obviously you're episode number 182. Oh my goodness. Um, so 182 ladies that we've had on here, very few, uh, metal fabricators. It is not as common there. I'm seeing more and more of it, but it's not as common. Um, and it was so cute. Your boss was like so proud of you. It was so adorable. Like when he saw the She Shed, and for those who are listening who don't know what the She Shed is, it was a collaboration booth we did at SEMA this year that was focused on women in the trades. It was a couple of different organizations that came together. Um, but her boss came by and was like, oh, you have to meet one of my employees. He's so amazing. And he was just gushing about you. It was really, um, it was really cool to see. It was really cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's He's a pretty awesome guy. <laughs> no, I want to go back in time a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, how how did you get into this kind of work in the first place? I know you started out doing collision repair, and then you wound up moving into classic cars and, and customs and, and that sort of thing. Um, but how did how did all of this begin? Were you always a car head when you were growing up? Or how did it start? No, not really. I mean, honestly, like uh, it was because of my brother. Okay. So he would do like little paint jobs at the house. And, you know, we had this pink bike and I wasn't really a big fan of the color pink. So he just decided to like tear it apart. And he's like, oh, I'm going to paint it a different color okay. and add some flames to it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And so, like, after high school, I just didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And, you know, coming from a immigrant parent, we didn't have the money. So we just ended up, I ended up going to a community college that had a great program here for uh, automotive. So I was just like, oh, maybe I just want to paint like my brother did. Okay. So I ended up at community college in the collision repair uh, program and I was there for about a year when one of the instructors uh he asked me to be his helper which to me was extremely surprising just because you know you have all these other boys and you know he decided to pick me which is amazing because that's how I started and that's I awesome. started as his helper in collision and we just he became my mentor and a father figure to me. So he has a very, yeah, he has an extremely good spot in my heart and I'm always appreciated for him. And I honestly call him like my dad. So he's like my papa. Oh. So he knows exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. I love so, hearing that. I, th I feel like more teachers need to, to hear that and know like what a huge impact they can make on a person's life. Cause it can be yeah. what you just explained or it can be the polar opposite, but like this person became so meaningful to you and just by taking a chance on you and, and supporting you and. Yeah. You know, it's, you. it's hard to be picked out of all the boys. Cause I was the only female in, I guess the class in the, in the program. So for him to just take a chance on me and it ended up being one of the greatest things that I could experience and just started as a collision helper from literally not knowing anything yeah. to basically panel replacement on a, a, a broken car, you know? Right. So <laughs> that, that was pretty awesome. So that's how it started. And we just, I worked in collision for about three, four years with him. And then we just ended up at a hot rod, like a hot rod uh, shop. So from there, I was just learning how to do simple, basic, like body work and, you know, panel replacement, which is a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah. Going to uh, classic cars and not having, you know, parts that you could just take off and put back on so it's like learning how to do everything all over again so that was just in a different experience for me yeah. and from there I kind of grew uh, with more mentors so after uh, Ford which is my papa he uh, 
he ended up going in a different direction and I ended up staying at this hot rod shop and I just got more mentors there with them showing me how to do like body work to paint. So that's where I really learned how to paint. And okay. then just from there, it kind of went on and on and on to fabrication. So I love it. That's I a little it. bit of the journey. Yeah. No, we're gonna we're gonna dig into that some more. That's a it's a great journey. And I love um I love so much. I'm always hearing about mentors is always great because I really do believe like that is with women particularly, with anybody, right? Male yes. or female, a mentor can make or break you. But I think for women particularly, having good mentorship and having people who are um, willing to put themselves out there for us and support us, it, it, like it's the game changer. It's the single most important thing for women in the trades, I feel like. It um, really so, is. Yeah. Um, so, God, I had so many questions. Um, was it because he moved from collision to restoration that you made that switch or did you have an interest in restoration to begin with um to no. move over in that direction because it's a big difference I mean, between collision and restoration yeah it really is i mean whenever we were in the collision shop we did like one or two little like classic cars okay. and he ended up getting an opportunity to go to uh hot rock like shop and he asked me if I wanted to basically take the journey with him and I just said well yeah you know like you mentored me so much and became a big important part of my life I, it's kind of like well if I follow you are you gonna help me learn and basically expand my knowledge and he's like well of course so why would I want to stay at one place and just not really expand, you know? Yeah. So I ended up following him and it was, it was great. Cause I mean, I like to learn and the fact that, yeah, it takes someone else to help you in that journey to just learn. Yeah. So I'm curious, did he ever tell you, maybe he hasn't, but has he ever told you what made him take that chance on you in the in the beginning when you were first starting out and, and didn't know anything, like why he picked you? Uh, I think we talked about it briefly. And I mean, whenever I did start at school, I guess he he saw an interest that I had and I was kind of determined to do it just because of the fact that I'm a woman and that that annoying saying like well women shouldn't do this in <laughs> you know like this industry and to me it's one of those where like well you know up yours i could do it and i could probably do it better than you so <laughs> i think he appreciated that attitude because he's <laughs> extremely blunt as well so you know and i told him before like you know i did get into this program but honestly i never thought that anybody would take a chance on me, but I'm glad that he did. Yeah. So he's just basically that's how it happened because I was blunt and yeah. just I'm not one to back down from a challenge, I guess. I love it. Well, it sounds like you actually dive into a challenge specifically. You're like, <laughs> what? Yes, I'm signing up for that, even if it's going to be hard. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so you went from watching your brother do this <clears throat> to deciding why not let me try taking this class. Was it what you thought it was going to be when you were first getting into it? Like what were your first thoughts when you started getting into the nitty gritty of learning the trade as somebody who was kind of an outsider to it initially? Uh, honestly, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, you know, you watch some TV shows and they're like, oh, you get a little dirty, you do this, you do that. <laughs> and then once you're in there, you're just like, well, you get a lot of dirty. You <laughs> have to like cut yourself and you have to experience it. So to me, it was one of those where like, well, it's a little bit worse than TV, but it's not. <laughs> too bad i haven't okay. lost a finger so that's good knock wood yeah uh, let's keep yeah. it that way please cynthia um all fingers please <laughs> but no i mean it's just it was just the shock 
initially, but yeah. it's just one of those where like, well, you could either give up or continue doing it. So it's not a big deal just to yeah. get a little dirty and, you know, hurt yourself here and there, but that's about it. So yeah. that was not too bad. How how did your family react when you decided to go down this path? How did your brother, your your family, were they surprised? Uh, not really, I guess, because I've always been like the little tomboy and stuff. Okay. So they weren't too surprised. And I mean, they were all supportive. My mom, you know, as long as I work, she didn't really care. And <laughs> um, my brother was in the military at the time. Okay. So he uh, he just wasn't here but then he was and he'd just be like oh that's cool because he likes cars and he ended up being in aviation which makes it pretty awesome because my brother's in aviation and i'm in automotive which are like two big industries yeah definitely that's awesome all right very cool and then you're going through this program you've got this great mentor you're learning a ton, like heaps of information coming at you on the collision side, learning metal and body and paint and panels and all of the things. Um, was there a point where, where you were like, yes, this is it. Like I found, I found my passion. I love this. I want to do this for the rest of my life. Or did it just kind of like slow roll grow into this being your passion? I think it ended up like slow rolling once I actually got into the metal fabrication. Like, okay. I mean, I like the collision and I guess my favorite part was whenever I did panel replacements, it's just, you know, taking metal and replacing something that's messed up with something brand new that looks pretty. And I think that's what I enjoyed about when I was in collision and, you know, the body work and the fact that you do turn something ugly into something beautiful once you start fixing it and then getting into paint and yeah. things like that. Okay. So of all the different things, metal is your favorite? Yeah, I think so. Have you, have you messed around with the other stuff a lot or do you, have you mostly just focused on the metal at this point? No, uh, Right now, since we, I'm in a basically like a custom shop, and it's okay. everybody kind of does everything in a sense. Okay. You know, we do have our mechanics, and then we have like the fab shop and like the bodywork side. But since I do know the trade of bodywork, paint, you know, panel replacement, welding, metal shape, like I could do it all. But there are the days, you know, every day is different. Like some days I feel like cutting metal and then some days it's just like, oh, I kind of want to do body work and just not think about much and just focus on this. Okay. That's, I, I was going to ask, like, do you like being able to do a little bit of all of the above? Like, I think some people really like being focused in on one thing and other people like being able to handle a bit of everything so they can switch back and forth. It sounds like you appreciate the variety. Yeah, I think I appreciate the variety a little bit more just because the skill set it takes and everything is, you know, an art within itself. And I like that fact that, you know, one day I could basically make some art out of Bondo and bodywork and fix something. And then the other day I could pretty much fabricate something out of metal and make like brackets you know, boxes or, you know, even a whole dash panel. So it just depends, but I do enjoy a little bit of everything. The only yeah. thing I'm still learning and I need to get better is the mechanic aspect. <laughs> Come that's... on down to Phoenix. I'll, I'll teach you. <laughs> All right. That's a whole nother can of worms though. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get better at what you do. So maybe we can do a little knowledge exchange. <laughs> yeah, we could trade. <laughs> so talk to the folks at home a little bit about the difference between collision and restoration and what like maybe some of the things that shocked you the most or just like you know were the biggest adjustments I guess I should say when you switched over to restoration and custom cars because I think you know often they get lumped together right there's collision and restoration but they're 
such different worlds and it's such different work. Um, what can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, of course. Um, I guess like it was a whole different change because in collision repair, you could basically like, oh, well, that's broken. Just buy a new one or I could replace that. And with restoration custom, it's, well, this car hasn't been produced in 50 years. So it's somehow we have to make this panel look original and that's the biggest thing. And then, you know, like with collision repair, it also depends on what shop you work at, you know, like back order on parts and, you know, you have the demand of getting like 10 cars out in one week. And if you have the support of team, then that's great. It helps everybody out when it comes to like the hot rod is you have to have a team to work together and make this happen because you know there are people that are like oh well i could do it all by myself yeah but it could take you a lot longer and it's <laughs> so much better when you have a team of people helping you basically restore this car I feel like that's like, can we say that louder for the people in the back? Because I feel like that is true in like life, right? Like, yes, you can do it alone, but isn't it just yeah. so much more fun and go so much faster and so much better when you have a team that you can count on and that all gets yeah, along? Yes, so of course. It makes <laughs> it so much better. The atmosphere is 100% just great. Makes yeah. the day go by faster. And, you know, it's better being happy than angry all the time. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, I feel like collision is like super high speed, right? Like mm -hmm. it's it's get it in, get it out, get it done. And then restoration is this whole, and custom building becomes even more so this whole different world where you're just like, it's, there's so much more to it. The standards are so much different. Um, it's it's almost like different ways of approaching things often, especially with, with the metal and the body work. Like newer cars, we're not welding all that much. We're, yeah, right? Like it's, you're bolting yeah. and tack welding, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, I um, mean, like the hot rod industry, it's like you said, it's just a completely different beast. It's one of those where like, you know, it needs to be perfect or at least that's what you aim to. <laughs> and it's like these old cars are harder to see and you don't see them every day. And why would you want like, part of history be kind of nasty and grungy and not looking their best whenever if we take the time we can make it a show quality car and some people don't see that it's like well why are you taking so long well it just kind of needs a little bit of massaging to <laughs> make it perfect because if there is one small imperfection that's what everybody points to so it's we want to make everything perfect. So we're going to take our time. And even if it takes twice as much as collision does. Yeah. Or four or five or 10 or times. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I like that perspective too, about like a little piece of preserving history, like taking these, these cars from the past and helping bring them back. That's a, a cool part of it. Would you ever go back to collision or is, is restoration and customs your home forever now? I think that's my <laughs> home forever now. Yeah, it's kind of hard going back. Right. I mean, it's a it's a it's a good industry, but it's just something that I don't see myself doing again just because I do love metal fabrication and you know, taking the time to design something and I've had the opportunity to do that a couple of times where there is something that's non-existence and we basically make it into existence by just shaping metal or cutting metal and welding metal. There's nothing like that feeling, is there? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, when you take a flat sheet of metal and turn it into something with curves and angles and shape and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, I made it's that. crazy. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to see like, you know, flat piece of metal. And even with just your hands, you try to bend it and you can't, but somehow 
we made it into a ball or gave it some contour or radius or something. And it's like, well, shit. <laughs> so this shop that you're at now, is that the same shop that you went to originally with your mentor when he moved over to restoration? Have you stayed at that same shop or is it another shop that you're at now? No, I'm at a different shop now. I mean, okay. I've jumped from whenever we left collision, we went to a shop and unfortunately that shop kind of, ended up closing its doors and mm. um we from there i kind of just jumped from like two three places to find the right place and but most of the places that i have been are like i've been there for three years you okay. know four years and i've experienced different aspects of the hot rod industry in each one of them you know so that's the benefit of it, the yeah. jumping around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think there's there jump jumping around quote unquote gets a bad rap, right? Cause it's mm -hmm. it, back in the day, it was kind of seen as like a bad thing on your resume. But I think in reality, especially as a woman, you know, you, sometimes you have to go to different shop to find yeah. a good environment. So Talk to me about that process, going from shop to shop, and what you what you kind of learned at each one, and and um, how you kind of honed in now on this this shop that is ideal for you. Because I think a lot of a lot of people hesitate to do that. So hearing your story of what how that benefited you, I think would be beneficial. Uh, well, I mean, originally, you know, we went to the one shop, and because it closed because because they closed their doors some of us from the team we ended up all together and we just kind of went to a different shop which oh, cool. was great you know because that team worked really good together and then everybody had their lives and their part of having to do something different when at the end it was like two of us and us two kind of stuck together and we moved together to like two other shops and oh, interesting so me learning from him you know was really good because he was more of the mechanical but he would ask me you know to help him you know like hey change that suspension or hey do this and it's just like well i don't know but all right i'll do it <laughs> and so i kind of learned more of just you know, doing what I needed to do in order to keep working. Okay. And then after that, I ended up at where I really learned like my fabrication skills from one of my old coworkers, which is, he's amazing. And unfortunately he's not in the industry anymore. He decided to become a pilot, but. Oh, wow. Um, That's a switch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, no more metal. I would just go fly. But, uh, <laughs> Okay. He was amazing. He took a liking to me. And I guess he also saw that I was interested and in that I guess I did good work. So I was with him at my previous job, not this one, at my previous shop. And I was there for four years. And that's where I learned metal shaping, like TIG welding, and just really honing my skills in metal fab and i really enjoyed that because we worked on we worked on a, a riddler car that Ooh. is still not done but um that's the car that i learned on and is just a different kind of skill set and from me you know doing body work and painting and doing extremely small fab work to hey let's make a whole car is just mind-blowing and that's where i really really just fell in love with the metal shaping and creating something out of nothing yeah i love it also there's this theme <clears throat> throughout your career history that is like you know finding great mentors and yes finding great connections with people. Cause it, it sounds like at each, like each jump that you made was like with part or all of your crew was with a mentor or several people you work with, which is, I think so cool. Like I definitely don't, 
feel like I hear that often, this idea of like, we're all moving to this next shop together, or like yeah. some of us are moving together. Do you feel like as, as a woman or as just somebody coming up in it, do you feel like that benefited you in finding the new shops to work at? Like it was helped you get your foot in the door places because you had, like you were coming as a package deal with other people? I think it did. And, you know, honestly, I'm extremely grateful to have had people, especially men, to take a liking to me and actually wanted to teach me and became yeah. become my mentors. And like you said, it's extremely rare for men to even want women in this industry, first of all. And then second of all, to like, hey, you know, come over here instead of you staying there. That's That was amazing too. But, you know, with me moving so much, but staying still with the same people, just because I think the industry itself is extremely small, even in the hot rod industry, you know, like this person has worked at two, three other hot rod shops and that person has worked at this other two, three other hot rod shops. So I think with the industry being so small, it's bound to happen that we are going to end up working with the same people or that person knows this person and that person knows that person. And yeah. eventually, you know, everyone's going to know each other, especially in the DFW area. It's, it's not that many. Mm. So don't burn bridges is the moral of that. So story, don't right? burn bridges. Yes. <laughs> What's the secret to your success with finding these incredible mentors? Because I, I, I refuse to believe that it's purely luck that you've managed to have such great mentors. How are you seeking out or gaining and and creating those relationships? What's your secret to your success there? I mean, I don't honestly. It's just being lucky, I guess, you know, it started with my instructor and from his knowledge, learning what he taught me and then him knowing this person and him telling that person about me, got those people curious of like, I'm pretty sure it's one of those like, oh, a woman? Sure, let's try it. So then they'll asked me to like help them and stuff. And I guess they realize, oh, she does know how to do something or she does know how to do A, B, C, and D. And I want to believe that it's a respect that it's not just a woman thinking that she knows how to do A, B, C, and D. It's the fact that I do know how to do A, B, C, and D. Right. And it's like you said, it's just not burning bridges and, you know, I'm just being me at the end of the day and I want to learn and I want to get better at my skill set. So I hope that everybody gets to see that that's who I really am and that I just want to create things and not, I don't want drama. I don't want to be angry. I just, I'm literally here to work and <laughs> do badass shit. Love it. So it has nothing to do with luck at all. It has everything to do with your attitude. <laughs> well, that's it. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I love. I love that you're like. It's. I think I just got lucky. But then you listed out all the reasons why somebody would want to mentor you, and you created that right by being authentic, by really being passionate, by caring, by wanting to learn, and by just continuing to build your your reputation and focusing on that. So I think. I mean, that's a phenomenal secret sauce. It's worked for you. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I mean, the way that I ended up at uh, where I'm currently working at, Legacy Classic Cars, um, yeah. it's because one of my older mentors is like an old man and, you know, grumpy old man is kind of hard to like please. And, you know, it's just that in industry and the fact that like, oh, these old, you know, young generations don't know what to do. Right. And working with him and he's the one that taught me how to paint and I showed him my skill set and he ended up going to Legacy first and he's the one that recommended me to my boss and nice. that's how I ended up. Nice. Where I am now. 
Nice. I love. I feel like sometimes the somebody uh, that I interviewed a couple of months ago, years ago, even probably at this point, said that uh, her her favorite thing to do was find the grumpiest man, oldest grumpiest man in the shop, and pick them out to be their mentor because they wind up being the best allies once you win them over. Oh, of course. That's ex <laughs> that's exactly what this old man is. <laughs> <laughs> find the grumpiest one, <laughs> win them over, and you're set. <laughs> He's a grumpy old man, but he's my grumpy old man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> so if you like, all right, I feel like one of the big things that we battle in the trades, we battle as women, we battle the perception of us as women within the trades. But then we also battle like the perception of the trades by the rest of the world. And I feel like there's a lot of not great understanding of what we do and what the job is and what it's all about. Um, if there is, if is there, are there any like misconceptions about what you do that you would love to be able to clear up for the world? Or if there's one thing that you could like say about your trade that you wish more people knew, what would that be? I guess it's one of those where we don't always need our hands to be hold. You know, like we could do it, just show us how to do it and don't like underestimate us because just because you could do it and you're trying to teach someone to do it. And then, you know, it takes practice just because as anybody and we can't get it the first time doesn't mean that we won't get it the second or third time. And that's one thing with, I guess, men in the industry they have little patience for women sometimes. And it's like, well, I already showed you once or twice, you should get it. And it's like, well, yes and no. You know, you're a strong man that could lift up a freaking like hood. You know, it takes me and another person to do that. So it's just one of those where patience is the key and whether it's with women or new people in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's, it kind of throws back to something else you said earlier that like there's there's this preconceived notion, I think from older folks that like younger kids don't wanna learn and don't wanna do the work. But then at the same time, they don't wanna teach us. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's contradicting. <laughs> Right. So, so if we could ma wave a magic wand, what we'd fix is that people are willing to give us a shot and be patient with us as we learn and be willing to teach. Yes. Right? That's like yes. the biggest thing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you've had some amazing teachers and amazing mentors along the way. Um, what has been the most challenging part of metal shaping uh, and and fabrication for you to learn? What have you found to be the most challenging piece, whether it's a type of process or a specific tool or um, what has been your biggest challenge? Uh, I think the power hammer has been a big challenge just because it is an extremely heavy machine and big machine. And Explain it what just, it is to people who don't know what a power hammer is. So a power hammer is this, I guess, like a giant machine that has so much force in order to shape a metal or you could have a little bit of shape. So it's just knowing, I guess, how the machine works to try to get your results. So you have different dyes. So dyes are like, you know, the what well, will well, what will help you shape your piece of metal. So you could have like something that you want a giant contour, so it has a bigger radius, or something that's smaller radius, and it's just that's my biggest challenge is trying to use the right tool and the right dye in order to get what. I'm envisioning in my head in order to reality. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I've never messed with a power hammer, but I, I really want one and I would love to learn. Um, yeah. But it's, it seems a lot to figure that, to figure out those details of how to get the metal to move in the way that you want it to. Um, yeah. Is, 
I'm curious, what is your favorite process within metal shaping? Um, I think the plenishing hammer. So the plenishing hammer is pretty much just a smaller version of a power hammer. Okay. But the jaws move a lot quicker. So it's one of those where, let's say, you have a piece of metal and you hit it with a hammer so many times and you want to make it smooth. So you kind of use a plenishing hammer just because the arms do move at extremely fast rate. So you're just smoothing a surface out. So that's what I like about it, just because you can make like something that looks bad into something that looks nice and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, planishing hammer is magical. Um, I feel like it's similar, at least my experience. I'm new to all of this, so um, take what I say with a grain of salt. But um, <laughs> I feel like both with the planishing hammer and the power hammer, it's this like learning how to use it the logistics of learning how to use it is 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 simple figuring out how to master it is yes. like profoundly complicated because it's you know how to use it put a piece of metal in between the two moving parts right <laughs> and then yeah. regulate your pressure but then it's the art form of figuring out what does what to the metal and how it how it moves and how which die to pick and what pressure and how to move it how do you get good at it how just did you practice. get good? Just practice. <laughs> just practice. I mean, at the previous uh, job or the previous shop that I was at, you know, I like I said, I was lucky enough to have a mentor that he just, you know, he knew how to do it. He would show me and tell me what to do. And then it was just trial and error. Honestly, it's the same thing with like um, you're shrinking and stretching. So sometimes you think you want to shrink a panel but it's the total opposite so it's one of those where you just like try it doesn't work well then do the opposite and if it doesn't work again then start all over but it just ends up just practice makes perfect yeah and even then i'm still i'm still learning there's still so much that i want to get better at you know i've used the english wheel a couple times but it's something that some people don't even need a planishing hammer or a power hammer. They do it all just the English wheel. And that to me is amazing because it's like, how do you do that? I want to learn how to do that. <laughs> it's magic. It's, it's all magic I to know. learn it, right? <laughs> yes, it does. It, it looks like magic. Yeah. Well, and that's another interesting point that you bring up, that there's so many different ways of going about all of the things, right? That there is no one, one way of doing it. I feel like metal work is such an analogy for life in so many ways. Like there's so many life lessons that I took out of learning how to work on metal. Like exactly what you said, like if you try it one way and it doesn't work, okay, try something different. Like it just, yeah, pretty much you, there's you just so many possibilities. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just endless. And it's, it's crazy to think that like, this person could use this method, that person could use this method, that person could use a different one, and they all come up with the same result. But it's just everybody has a preference of how they do things. And yeah. some people are just, well, I've only done it one way, so this is the way that I'm going to do it. But yeah. I think that especially in the metal fabrication industry, it's one of those where if you know how to use three tools, then at least you know how to use three tools and three parts of equipment or even more just just because you can't get it with this one you might be able to get it with that one and i think that's awesome because you have endless possibilities to create just about anything yes yes i think that's the most that's the coolest part about the trades in general right like you can create anything and there's so many different ways of doing it and it's endless possibilities and it's just um it's incredibly cool uh have you ever questioned your decision to pursue this particular career path have you ever thought god i wish i'd gone to some other type of school or wish i'd done something else or have you just 100 this has been this has been it uh, i think this has been it just because i can't 
picture myself doing anything else. I've always thought about it like, oh, well, if I wasn't doing this, what would I do? And it's something that I can't, I honestly don't have an answer. And I think <laughs> this is just what I like and this is what I want to do. And whether it's with cars or eventually, you know, maybe start doing sculptures or something, but it's all metal fabrication and welding and ticking. And that's just something I really, really enjoy. I love it. That means you found the right thing. You said sculpture. Have you, are you creative? Have you been an artistic type growing up or? Yeah, I think I, when I was, well, when I was younger, I used to draw a lot. So okay. it's just something that kind of grew up on. And then, like I said, after seeing my brother draw little flames on a bicycle, it's just like, well, that's just a bigger canvas. So yeah, let's just give it a go. And I guess that's why I really enjoy metal fabrication because it's, creating something and it's just using your imagination and getting it into reality. I love it. Tell me about your favorite project that you've been a part of or taken on thus far. Um, it was at my previous job and it's the car I can't really talk about. But uh -oh. <laughs> I think it's just the fact that we well, it's the fact that it taught me how to use different skill sets. So in that project specifically, you know, I learned how to fabricate in metal shape, but I also had to, how to do woodworking just because yeah. I've had to learn how to do bucks in order to make a panel. And I think the aspect of just learning and learning and learning and creating is something that I just truly enjoy just because it's something that I don't know or didn't know. And now I know. Nice. Uh, how about dream projects or do you have any personal projects that you're doing? No, I don't have no. personal projects, <laughs> but uh, I mean, we Is are working on a 19... 70 or 69 Camaro and we're doing some small fabrication jobs here and there but it's not anything too big you know we just did a it's a 1969 Camaro and you know we added mini tubs we did okay. floor panels uh tucked in front bumper rear bumper you know and it's just those kind of small touches that make a big difference on the car that everybody else sees. And right. that's kind of what I really like is it's the same, but it's not the same if you start mm -hmm. to pay attention. I like your, I like your approach to things. You have this really um, eye to towards the detail and towards finesse and um, you know, it's, I, I, I hear this often and it's just, you're really embodying it. This like idea that the trades are this kind of just rough industrial thing, but it's a craft, right? Like it is a skill. It is an art form. And hearing you talk about shaping metal and how you approach the projects and what part of the project kind of lights you up, it just really highlights and embodies that it, it is a craft. And it is something you hone your whole life and it is detail and it's finesse and it's um, all of the different skill sets combined into one. Um, I just, I think you've definitely found the ideal place for you. It is, um, you're in the right, you're in the right spot. You're in the, doing the right thing. I love it. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, with the this shop that I'm at, I have the privilege to, have another mentor and you know he's more of a well-rounded guy that does mechanic to you know bodywork to fabrication and i'm so glad that he came upon the team just because he said he's you know he's willing to teach me how to do mechanical and that's just another part that makes this whole car industry especially the hot rod industry into a whole if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, no, abs absolutely. It's all, all parts and pieces of it. With all of these amazing mentors that you've had, um, have you worked with any other women throughout your career? I have. I worked with one other female. Her name's Sophie. 
Okay. And unfortunately, she's not in the industry anymore. Oh. But yeah, she's uh, she did a couple motorcycles, which were pretty interesting and pretty badass. And then I have a friend that she does pinstriping. So nice. she's an awesome person. And um, and another female that was doing a little bit of a collision, but she stopped doing it as well. Mm. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, don't get me started ranting on why we're losing women from the industry. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. That's, that's another topic for another day. <laughs> did did you encounter any challenges? I mean, you had these great mentors, but I'm sure it wasn't always a, a cakewalk and it wasn't always easy, breezy, beautiful. Um, did you have challenges as a woman? Um, I mean, yes, I did, you know, and there were challenges because I was a woman and there were challenges because uh, I'm an LGBT woman and also because I am a Latina woman. So there were the occasional guys, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you could dislike me or hate me for who I am, but I'm still going to keep working and I'm going to show off and, you know, show you what I could do. And my work speaks for itself. You had, your, you had three things that made you other, that made you outsider, that made you different. Um, I, I can only imagine um, having experienced, you know, I experienced a fraction of that as a woman, um, but you got three times that. Um, how did you, I mean, obviously you focused on your work and you let your work speak for itself, but um, what were your tools that you used yourself to kind of keep yourself going and keep yourself from letting it bother you. Cause I can only imagine that that just, it wears on you after a while. That's why we're losing women from the industry. Cause it wears on you. How do you keep yourself going through all of that and keep it from affecting you? Honestly, just ignoring it. You know, at the end of the day, it's not my problem. It's people's egos that get hurt. So I just put my headphones on and I just did what I needed to do. And if the comments or actions were towards me, I just walked away. You know, it's extremely hard to walk away. But at the end of the day, if I don't walk away, I'm only hurting myself. So I'd rather just ignore it and just, you know, music, honestly, music got me through a lot of difficult times because I just rather listen to music than listen to people's nonsense. Amen to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rather listen to music than other people's nonsense. It's one of those catch-22s though. It's frustrating because it's, you know, things don't change unless we, unless we speak up and do something about it. And at the same time, in the day-to-day, just ignoring it really is often the best way of handling it and reminding yourself exactly like you said, like, this is not about me. This is about them. Um, don't let it bother you. This says more about them than it does about me. Um, so it's a challenge, right? Because we want to change it, but... It is. It is it's a, it is a challenge and it did get difficult at times, but it also helps that you do have that support system in the workplace. You know, there were there were a couple of times where guys would stand up for me just because I wouldn't say anything and they were tired of it. So mm -hmm. there were times that they would say something and that's something that I appreciate. And, you know, I did get lucky to have great people in my life and great mentors and great teammates. But when it came to me just ignoring it, I just, like I said, I just, it's their problem. It's their ego, not my ego. I'm just, I'm just another person in this world trying to work and make a living. And, you know, sometimes it did get frustrating and all I could do is just go home and play video games or go out for a drink or something, but I'm not going to act upon it just to give them the reaction that they want. 
I don't know about you guys at home, but I love her humility. Like she's, I'm just another person trying to make it in the world and just right? <laughs> like so humble. So, um, so understated. You are so incredibly understated. You have overcome so much. And I 100%, I do not accept that this was just luck. This is your attitude. This is your discipline. This is your hard work. And it's, who you are as you go into these different places because you've created the mentorships, you've created the allies um, and you've, I mean, that's the best thing, right? When your people stand up for you and you don't have to do it yourself, right? When they stand yeah. up and say, that's not okay to talk to people like that or treat people like that. And they're there for yeah. you and have your back. You did that. You yeah. made that happen. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if you're the one that reacts and they're going to be like, well, see, this is why women shouldn't mm. be in the industry because the hormonal or emotion or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> right. dude, I'm tired of your bullshit. Is that, right. That's the issue. <laughs> like They poke, 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 poke until they get a reaction. And then once they get a reaction, they're like, see, she reacted. Yeah, I'm the bad guy, but it's like, no, you 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 did it. You poked the bear and then the bear attacked and <laughs> you get mad. 100%. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. We have only four minutes left because time goes way too fast. See, this hour went by so quickly, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. All right. So um, my my final question to you that I like to ask everybody um, is if you had the opportunity to go back and talk to little baby Cynthia um, or another little girl like you and give her some words of advice, what are they? Be patient. It takes practice and everything's going to be okay, especially if you find the right people that will teach you and willing to teach you, stick to them like Lou. I love your zenness. You're so, I want to, like, whatever you got, <laughs> I want some of that, this calmness that you have, this quiet, humble strength. Um, you're phenomenal, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. It has been absolutely a pleasure. I hope we get to work together someday. Um, I think that would be really cool to work on something together. Uh, you are you are a gift to this industry. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. This is such a pleasure and an honor just to even have this and be picked to do this. Absolutely. The honor is all mine. Thank you so much. And folks at home, thank you guys so much for joining in and spending part of your evening with us. Um, I hope you enjoyed meeting Cynthia as much as I did. Definitely go check her out on her social media pages. I'll have links to those down below so you can follow along on her work and cheer her on and see as her career continues to evolve and develop as I'm sure it will. Um, make sure you come back next week. We have another incredible woman Woman, tradeswoman for you to meet next Wednesday. And of course, every Monday we have an archive episode release. So two times a week, you get to watch an episode of the With Her Two Hands podcast and meet another incredible, inspiring, uh, amazing woman kicking butt in the trades. Uh, if you like this series, please hit like, hit subscribe, leave comments down below. That all helps the algorithm get the message out so that more people get to meet these incredible women. If you know any awesome trades women that should be on the show, send me a message and we'll get them on the schedule. Thank you guys for being part of the change. Together, we will change the future and make it what we want it to be. And that is a future where it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter what your race or your background is. It doesn't matter your sexuality or your sexual orientation. None of that matters. The tools don't care. Neither should we. And Thank you guys for being part of that. And of course, a huge thank you to Drive Time, our sponsor of today's episode, for their support, uh, both in day-to-day -day life and behind the scenes, uh, everything that they do to help create space for a more diverse workforce within the trades. So thank you to them. Thank you to you guys. Till next time, be good to yourselves, be good to one another, and we'll see you later. Good night, guys. <laughs>